Welcome back to Morning Express. It's now half past six right here on Morning Express. Time for the dawn debate. And today we want to look at climate change. Remember, not too long ago, for those of us who were with us earlier, we were joined by Brian, who was at Marikiti Market. And one of the things that he mentioned is the fact that there seems to be a huge problem when it comes uh, to having food supply in Marikiti Market to a point where Kenya is now importing uh, food from Tanzania. And of course, that uh, begs the question, why would we be importing? Secondly, you've also noticed that we seem to have a problem where we have drought for a period of time, then after that we have floods, then drought again, and there just seems to be a change all over. So when we talk about climate change, what exactly are we talking about? Now, joining me in studio is Dr. Julius Muya, who is the Director General for Kenya Vision 2030. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right, now let's start with just a very basic understanding of climate change. When we talk about climate change, what are we exactly talking about? Well, basically, this is um, the phenomena of the weather situation, where you've got uh, frequent, you've got um, uh, very severe weather changes, uh, you've got droughts, you've got floods, uh, which are interchanged, mm -hmm. and then you've got situations where they are not predictable. Uh, and that is the situation that uh, we are having, where we are having longer stretches mm. of unfavorable weather, and that is the climate change situation. Oh, okay. Now, you've mentioned that sometimes the, it, it's uh, unpredictable. It's something that one... But how unpredictable is unpredictable? The reason I say that is because with the science that we have today, isn't it possibly possible to make at least a bit of, of a distinction when we are likely to have flash floods, mm -hmm. when we are likely to have drought? Well, certainly there have been cycles that uh, we know about uh, when... Uh, the weather situation gets extreme on one side, you know, in terms of uh, drought, extreme in terms of a lot of rainfall. Mm -hmm. But again, I, as I say, it is the lack of predictability mm -hmm. of when those extremes come and the frequency with which uh, these extremes come. That is what is happening nowadays. Mm -hmm. and, and when we talk about the climate change uh, uh, challenges that are there in the country and the world over, it is compounded by that high unpredictability uh, lately, in spite of the advances in technology. Okay. Yeah. So you are Director General Vision 2030, Kenya Vision 2030. And between now and then, what is uh, Kenya doing in preparation? Because right now we are undergoing a major severe uh, food shortage. Mm -hmm. Just like I mentioned earlier, we have our reporter who was at Marikiti this morning. And one of the things, obviously, that he reported is the fact that there is a general shortage of food supply. Uh, I would categorize the uh, responses and what uh, is being done in, in several uh, classes. Uh, one of them is what is immediate now. And the other one would be what you would say is the medium term in the next five years. And then the other one would be longer term than five years. Mm -hmm. So immediate term is uh, to solve the immediate problem about food shortage. Mm -hmm. The fact that there isn't enough uh, flour, especially maize, uh, wheat flour as well, and also sugar. And that is uh, to look at where then do we go, especially when we have shortages. And it's not the first time that we are having shortages of maize, uh, meal, and uh, also wheat. Mm -hmm. And basically what we do within the East African region is uh, to import uh, from Tanzania, uh, from Uganda. And that is what is happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also are able to import maize from Malawi when they have uh, extra maize and also South Africa. Because maize, you've got to buy it, especially where you get white maize, not just yellow maize or any other corn that you have in the market. So opening up the uh, trade routes and making sure that uh, tr uh, business people can bring in uh, grain and uh, without also having to pay duty, that is the immediate uh, solution. One would beg the question, Uganda and Tanzania has, happen to be in the same region that we are. So we'd imagine they undergo the same weather patterns. Why would we be importing from them as opposed to producing our own? One of the uh, facts that we must remember is that um, over 85% of Kenya is not suitable for arable farming. And so Kenya has a large swathe of land which is actually not suitable for growing maize, for growing wheat, uh, for doing uh, settled agriculture. And therefore, we are in a worse climatic zone than Uganda and Tanzania, if you look at the landmass of each of those countries. So uh, to speak, um, that is why traditionally, uh, whenever we've got a, 
a drought situation, we've had to go to our neighbors uh, to import food. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, um, I think I, I can talk about, um, as we go, about what arrangements are there to make sure that we don't have this repeat of the same uh, situation every now and then. Okay. And uh, the other thing, of course, would be we seem to have sporadic drought, then floods. Isn't there a way that even as we continue to get to Vision 2030, we can try and harvest, first of all, the amount of water that comes in, mm -hmm. which we use uh, later on? Because one might even argue mm -hmm. that we are far better, as much as 85%, according to what you say, is not arable land, mm -hmm. we are far better than, say, countries like Israel which are almost fully desert. We have mm -hmm. a lot of arable land. We have fairly um, reliable weather. Why can't we, is, is it just a matter of planning? Well, actually, precisely why, if you look at uh, Vision 2030 and the medium-term plan that we're executing now, the 2013-2017, mm -hmm. we identified an agenda uh, within the neblas of Vision 2030 that we should end drought and emergencies. And this is a, a very big uh, discussion and uh, agenda point that we are considering as a country. And if you look at uh, what has been done, there is a National uh, Disaster Management Authority that has been set up. And it is now addressing the institutional structures uh, so that we can uh, be able to deal with the situations about uh, the floods, the uh, droughts uh, that come frequently. But having said that, if you look at uh, the um, area of agriculture, um, the country is focusing not to rely on rain-fed agriculture so much. And that is why we've got uh, huge irrigation schemes like the Galana Kulalu, uh, which is um, uh, proving very successful. And we've got uh, other initiatives like uh, in the Career Development uh, Valley Authority. Mm -hmm. And we are... So, let, let me just pause you there because yeah. you say it is proving to be successful. What, what are you using to gauge its success? Because majority would say the fact that right now we're mm -hmm. having a pro problem with maize flour mm -hmm. is an indication that possibly it has not met the expectation of many Kenyans. Well, why I'm saying that is proving successful because uh, we went there last year in November to actually see how the project is being implemented. It's along uh, River Athi. It is using water which is running on the river, and they are doing irrigation. And that irrigation is growing a crop of maize where the yield is more than three times the national average in a year, you know, what you'd get per acre. Also, the, the beautiful thing is that uh, they are using technology from Israel. And so that rain-fed uh, agriculture that we rely on, it's being proven that you can actually use irrigation to overcome the challenges that you have. So this is a project at its initial stages. Mm -hmm. The concept has been proven, mm -hmm. and now we are going to scale it up. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the early fruits, uh, those have been realized because uh, the yields of maize that have been uh, realized from that uh, project mm -hmm. have been distributed around that region. And how long in your experience do you think it's actually going to take to convert the Galana Kulalu project into mm -hmm. uh, tangible, um, a tangible result such that we can mm -hmm. say five, ten years ago we used to suffer food shortage, we mm -hmm. don't suffer anymore? Mm -hmm. I would say fairly quickly because uh, the concept has been proven. Um, this week there was an advert in the papers and last week about uh, potential investors now to scale it up. Uh, so that you can increase the ac acreage from the current uh, 1,000 or so uh, to uh, close to a million uh, acres under irrigation. Mm -hmm. and then I see in the next four or five years, uh, that will be realized. Okay. Yeah. Now run us through the existence, or rather the National Climate Change Action Plan uh, of 2013, because now we're in 2017. Yes. Uh, the, it being an action plan mm -hmm. would suggest that there are milestones. Within a certain time, some, certain things should be achieved. Mm -hmm. Let's start mm -hmm. with what exactly the plan mm -hmm. was. Well, I would start first and uh, appreciate actually that question. I would start first by the National Climate Change Response Strategy. Uh, of uh, 2010, uh, because that is the document that gave birth the mm -hmm. National uh, Climate Change Action Plan, mm -hmm. uh, because the plan is for a period 2013-2017, and that is the one that uh, we have been able to use when we are doing medium-term plan two of 2013-2017 to extract various uh, agenda points and uh, strategic uh, initiatives uh, within the medium-term plan two. One, looking at uh, what I've just mentioned, ending uh, drought and emergencies. Uh, that is one area. 
looking at the areas in the north, northern uh, part of Kenya and areas which are very prone to uh, climate change uh, challenges and making sure that uh, we reduce the losses uh, that are happening uh, in terms of uh, uh, human life, in terms of uh, livestock uh, because of uh, drought. Then also uh, looking at forests uh, within the uh, Vision 2030, we've got a social pillar and we're looking at the forest cover uh, to make sure that we've got more forest cover. Uh, that is a way of mitigating climate change and also adapt, adapting to climate change. Mm -hmm. Then in the financial services sector, we're looking at uh, a Kenya climate change fund uh, so that that fund can be used to mobilize funds and resources uh, from uh, international uh, development partners so that that pocket now can be used uh, to disburse to areas where there is uh, severity in terms of disaster. All so right. some, some structures, uh, some milestones have been set and uh, there are some that I can say have been achieved, like even setting the uh, National Disaster Management Authority uh, it's one of those uh, milestones. And would you say that uh, the milestones are in time? Are we going according to the schedule or are we running uh, behind? Certainly I would say there has been a lot of achievement in the milestones. And that is why if you look at the medium term three, uh, which we are in the process of now putting together, um, climate change has been put as one of the thematic areas that have to be considered when we are looking at all the areas of medium term plan three. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And then uh, there's the aspect also of looking at uh, now, bottom line is that Kenyans need to feel confident that we are not going to starve and prices are going to be affordable. Is there a time frame you can give from your experience when that can be realized? Because evidently that is not the case right now. We seem to be always be operating on an emergency kind of uh, uh, program. Well, I would say, um, looking at the medium-term plan three that uh, we are putting together, and if you combine that with the um, sustainable development goals, uh, which have got an area for green economy, uh, the agenda 12, 13, 14, and 15, we are pegging ourselves into that kind of framework. And I would say within the medium-term plan three, we should be able to overcome that uh, perennial challenge where every now and then we've got the situation of uh, we have got uh, a disaster occasioned by severe weather, either drought or floods. All right. Yeah. The other thing, of course, of concern would be, is there any possibility of reversal? Because climate change uh, speaks to the fact that we are experiencing weather patterns that are, one, unpredictable, and two, that have co changed. Uh, as opposed to before when we would know that we have the long rains coming, we have the short rains, and you're able as a farmer to plan your uh, planting and harvesting seasons. Mm. Is there a reversal that is expected or should we just work with what we have? Certainly, I would say the situation of climate change is getting worse uh, world over. It is not uh, a situation in it's Kenya. It's not a Kenyan thing. It's not a Kenyan phenomenon. Mm. Uh, but I would say one of the ways in which... Uh, nature and human beings cope with the situation like climate change is adaptation. And uh, adaptation can be the natural way, way where you just sit and you wait for it to happen. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we are now talking about planned adaptation, where we have got uh, s uh, structures, we've got uh, strategies, and we are thinking proactively mm -hmm. about what to do to minimize and mitigate uh, the effects of uh, the climate change. And what is the cause of uh, this drastic climate change? And do we have a role to play as humanity, as Kenyans, as uh, human beings? What is it that we do that is causing this to happen? Or is it purely an act of God? Well, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, but I would say the uh, natural uh, phenomena is, is less than what the human beings are contributing to. Uh, in terms of the uh, green gases that are being emitted in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and, and therefore causing a fair instability in terms of how the natural forces of climate change uh, happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question about uh, green gases, you're talking about uh, nitrous oxide, you're talking about uh, carbon dioxide being released in the atmosphere, you're talking about hydrocarbons. A lot of this happened because of human activity. So mm -hmm. it is us, us actually as human beings who have contributed a lot more uh, to the challenge of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. And do you think in Kenya we have enough policy to govern and ensure that we're not being careless, at least even if it's world over, as a country we are doing our part to ensure that we keep our country and our world green? I would say um, we were actually one of the first countries to come up with the National uh, Climate Change uh, Response Strategy in 2010. Mm -hmm. I would also say that um, 
our action plan for 2013, 2017 received a lot of accolades in terms of how it was structured. So in terms of planning and intent, we are one of the countries which is leading in this area. Mm -hmm. I think where we need to put more emphasis, which we are doing in medium term plan three, is now the implementation framework and also making sure that uh, the climate change action plan and the things that we want to do are done both at the ministry level, at the county government level, at all department level, at agencies, private sector, and um, private individuals like you and I, sir. Mm. Yes. All right, and, and you've talked about enforcement, and of course the question then would be how strict are, are those enforcing agencies? Because let's take a simple example. You've also mm. mentioned you and I. Yes. You've seen diesel-driven uh, vehicles driving, and literally they, they, they pollute more than they should. Mm. And sometimes it's just down to p poor maintenance of the engine. Do we have enforcement agencies that ensure that uh, certain emission levels are maintained? Secondly, you have factories that pour into the system and pour into the rivers uh, carelessly, dangerously so, mm, mm. Uh, to a point where we are actually putting ourselves in danger. Do we have uh, enforcement agencies that actually take action? Certainly, I would say we don't have a shortage of the institutions that are supposed to enforce. We don't have a shortage of the laws that should be that enforced. Mm -hmm. What we have a shortage of is, is the frame of mind and waking up as an individual and knowing that this is wrong, this is bad. You know, the culture of us being um, clear, uh, clear about climate change, mm -hmm. the issues that uh, we should address about pollution and all that, so that you as an individual, as you walk out, you know that you are not supposed to throw maybe some rubbish somewhere, or if you see somebody polluting the environment, you tell the person, hey, don't do this. So it is that culture and that frame of mind which we don't yet have. Mm -hmm. And I think with this emphasis in the medium term plan three, as I say, we will be able to go down into the granular level. Uh, where we then grow this uh, issue about being concerned about climate change at the person level, so that it's a mindset issue. Mm -hmm. And that way then, the sum total of our changed mindset will help us enforce the laws, enforce the regulation, and even enforce certain behavior that is not necessarily regulated and in law. Okay, and yeah. I believe uh, for us to get to the plan, as per Vision 2030, you need buy-in from everybody, That's from right. all and sundry, individuals, uh, companies, and all that. Is mm. there anything that uh, within your power, or you know that the government is doing to mm. educate people, mm -hmm. to ensure that people are informed how mm. dangerous this is, and literally we mm. are smoking ourselves to death? Well, Salah, that's a very good uh, question, actually. And um, again, I go back. The fact that uh, we have made uh, climate change one of the thematic areas, mm -hmm. as we are doing medium term plan three, it means that um, going forward, there is going to be a lot of emphasis in terms of going downstream and making sure that at the grassroots level, at the individual uh, person level, at the household level, and uh, even through the education system, people understand what climate change, what role they should play, and what dangers uh, lie ahead of us if we don't do the right things with regard to climate change. Okay, and is that, is that happening? You know, I've not seen any education or any information being disseminated out, and maybe it is there, it's me who's just not seen it, but just to have people fully understand the dangers that we put ourselves into. It is um, equivalent to starting, because if you look at uh, our medium-term plan two, 2013, 2017, is when we have started now implementing the Climate Change Action Plan, 2013, 2017. Mm -hmm. I would say the big push is going to be seen in medium term plan three, mm -hmm. which is where we have put climate change as a thematic area, which is going to be cutting through. And once government pronounces itself and says this is a thematic area, then you will see a lot of emphasis, a lot of push, a lot of talk, a lot of discussion about it. All right. Yeah. And you talked about adapting. And, of course, as human beings, we're meant to be very adaptive. And could tradition also be hindering us from uh, possibly adapting to the changes that we're having and more specifically to the kind of food we eat? Would there be a, a, an idea maybe to discover new kinds of foods that are more resilient, that are more uh, durable, that are possibly able to weather, uh, to, to weather uh, harder, uh, you know, um, um, weather, strict weather patterns that we, that we may not have right now? Could there be an idea of maybe introducing things like that? 
Well, certainly, and as I say, as we look at uh, our planning in medium term plan three, and we are engaging with a lot of stakeholders who are experts in this area of climate change, mm -hmm. we are asking ourselves, what needs to be done more than what you see on the surface mm -hmm. that can make us differentiate ourselves as a country, as a nation, in terms of how we deal with issues of climate change? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of discussion. Uh, my office, the uh, Vision 23 Delivery uh, Secretary and the board, we are actually engaging the implement of Vision 2030 mid-June uh, to look at the issues of climate change. And I am very sure that um, other mechanisms that uh, we have not thought about are going to come through. Mm -hmm. And um, given that, again, we want to make sure that this is uh, an overarching and cross-cutting issue that is going to inform our development planning. We are going to see things coming through that we haven't seen before. All right. And time frames. We, we have a habit of you know, hearing things that are coming, things that are going to happen, but they always remain in the future. It, it, it helps to put a time frame so that three, four months, five, four, two years from now, if you mm -hmm. sit down on this set, we can mm -hmm. say, look, you told that this was going to happen at this time. Yes. Has it happened? Uh, you can take my word to the bank uh, that, first of all, we have a medium-term plan that will be ready by December this year because it runs from 2018 to 2022. And the beauty about our development planning and our implementation framework is that what gets captured in the medium-term plan forms a strategic plan for ministries and government agencies. Also, it is the same one which then is the basis of the performance contracts that the ministries and the agencies do. So I would argue and say uh, confidently that um, we will have all this in the medium-term plan, and come next year, as we are executing that medium-term plan, those items that are important, you are going to see them being rolled out. All right. And uh, you'll agree with me as much as 80% of Kenyan land, you say, is not arable. Uh, there's a lot of unused land that should still be arable, but there is uh, a cultural or a mindset issue where everybody is in school working towards coming to the city. What is uh, your office or what can be done to uh, make agribusiness a bit more attractive and have people farm a little bit more to mm -hmm. provide food and that hopefully would also give us a greener country well for sure the allure of uh, bright lights in the city has been and an white attraction collar jobs. yeah white collar <laughs> jobs and, and, and all that has mm. been uh, a challenge in our in our part of the world mm. but let me also say if you look at vision 2030 one of the important sectors in the economic pillar is agriculture. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to make agriculture suitable, exciting, and, and one which is attractive, mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of um, engagement mm -hmm. with the, uh, uh, that sector in terms of the markets uh, where people sell their products. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of engagement uh, on the side of irrigation, a lot of engagement in terms of fertilizer, like the Eldoret fertilizer mixing plant, where the yields uh, have been proven to be very good. So. There is focus on agriculture because that is where over 70% of people get their earnings and their livelihoods from. Okay, all right. And, yeah, and that is going to reverse as okay. we go. And uh, let me now uh, bring in uh, Dr. Isaac Aloha, who's the Director General for Africa Foundation. Welcome and thank you for joining us. And uh, we we're just talking about climate change and what we can do. But uh, just before we wind up, maybe to uh, get your uh, perspective of, first of all, where our biggest problem lies and uh, possible solutions. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate what uh, the Vision 2030 team is doing. Congratulations, Moya, now that I have this opportunity Thank to you, speak sir. to you. Thank you, sir. I think the, 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 the thing is now getting into a very practical position. All the strategies have now evolved into an action plan, and we now actually have an act, just like my brother has just talked about. This act now calls for act, uh, practical uh, action in various areas. You can see the situation that we had and was being highlighted about the drought and the animals that are dying. This action is very practical. What can we be able to do is just to fight towards efficiency. When we talk about animals and herds of uh, cattle that we are keeping as uh, Kenyan families and various people, we need to move just like the US, who moved from uh, uh, millions and millions of cattle to lower in terms of efficiency so that we have good, good uh, nutrition for our animals. We have, uh, we have issues on, uh, on uh, veterinary, we have uh, issues on uh, efficiency of production, so that because these are issues that are affecting our people and we can be able to deal with them. But then, even more practical, 
the fund that now the Climate Change Act that comes through with, the, the, uh, the actual uh, team that is now working, headed by the presidency itself, just now needs to be activated. The fund, in terms of what needs to be raised in, the, in, the, in the Kenya, we need now to start thinking of how much are we going to raise uh, within our, our own uh, economy. We need to have maybe a percentage, say 10%, towards creating a fund towards, uh, towards uh, climate change, money that can be used to enhance uh, matters of uh, what has been raised and it's being worked very efficiently by the, by the Vision 2030. But then, it is Kenyan's responsibility. Climate change is not just an issue of uh, of environment. It is, it, is, it, is, it is everybody's action. It is a survival issue. Mm -hmm. We need, therefore, to start thinking what are we doing, our individuals, the 40 plus Kenyans, what exactly are we doing in efficiency of, uh, of our usage of energy at the household level, at the industrial level thereafter, and then what are we going to be able to take it up? And you see, you, it, it moves also to the issue of our county governments. What are they doing? to integrate all activities so that the budget that we even present to the main government, because it's becoming a finger-pointing issue, which is very, very unfortunate. Because if you talk about the resources that are being used at the county level, how efficient are you in using this? You talk about corruption, you find that there is even corruption at the county level, and it is everybody's. And, and, and therein lies the question, sir, because uh, the question which I had asked him earlier is information. Because like you've mentioned, it is the responsibility of everybody. And small little things we do individually can add up to a huge amount Mount. For example, just putting off your lights uh, in the house, that saves energy. Mm. Uh, the way maybe we wash our cars, we're into a habit of literally mm. just pouring water. Mm. That is still a, a contribution towards uh, depleting the resources that we have of water and whatever energy. What information are we getting out there to educate people and let people know that they're as responsible as possibly the county government or the national government? And, and this, this uh, now shoots to, the, to the, uh, the responsibility that we need to have as individuals ourselves. What are we doing? What are our CSOs doing? Mm with the monies that is being received every single day. Our NGOs, what are they doing to create awareness? The churches and the different institutions that we have and the uh, uh, faith-based institutions, how are they passing all this in, in, in this, uh, these issues? Because, and again, regulations, we have enough in this country. Mm -hmm. Policy. Uh, policy is available. I mean, look at the strategy that has ended up into uh, an act. Mm. Kenya is a leader in this, uh, in this kind of a sector. Mm. It is now the issue of starting, you know, I, I don't know whether to say it's fortunate or unfortunate, but Kenyans, we have a very short memory. Extremely shorter than any other that you can Probably ever imagine. Like a we have four we, seconds. <laughs> we have we have just forgotten the floods that we had recently. We have just forgotten that drought is here. Mm -hmm. We have now made the, this kind of an issue an election issue and uh, something. Yet we know very well that there will be a similar situation in a few years to come mm -hmm. because this is very clear out of uh, out of the trends Experience. that we've been having. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to start planning. You see, the U.S sits every single month to check on the status of employment or unemployment in their country. I want to suggest something that is unprecedented in this country. Why wouldn't we have a multi-sectoral meeting, an interdepartmental meeting on a monthly basis to check on the progress of uh, matters of climate change in this country and therefore keep us online and therefore we'll be able to identify a problem when it is coming and start dealing with it well in advance as opposed to just talking about good plans that we already have and now actionalizing mm. these plans so that our people can be able to understand. And, and allow me to pose you there so that Dr. Moya can answer that question. What stops us and is that the solution? Mm -hmm. Having regular plans to ensure that we are keeping on track with some of these uh, documented plans that we have. I would say, uh, okay, let me answer it the way you have put it. Uh, what stops us? I think what stops us is that we haven't started thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, more, di more, di more directly, more mm -hmm. directly, mm -hmm. as, as I say, um, we have the Climate Change Action Plan that we are implementing now. 
And uh, we are seeing things coming out of that in terms of the law that uh, Dr. Kaloa has talked about. So it's a question of idea has come. It is the right time that the idea is adopted. And um, nothing is stopping us. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of realizing that this is important for the part of the world that we live in. It's a reality that we've got to live with and uh, looking at mechanisms in which we can now deal with this situation. And I'm sure in the medium term plan three, we are going to identify new ways of putting our heads together, putting our thoughts together, and putting our actions together so that we deal with the climate change in a better way. All right, Dr. Isaac, do you, where, where do you think lies the problem? Because you've mentioned it's not a lack of policies, it's not a lack of plans. In fact, as a country, we are leading in some of the you know, plans that we have in regards to climate change. Where does our problem lie? We have refused to own up this process, to understand that it is not business as usual, mm. It's supposed to be that enhanced process of dealing with these challenges that we have. People who have been given the responsibility, because once you have been given the policy, once you have been given the regulatory framework, once you have everything else, is now taking up the issue and passionately owning it, knowing that this is a futuristic issue that must be dealt with today because it affects our posterity. We have people, I mean, you, you, you start something uh, in the Matatu, we even agree that there will be no, uh, no throwing of uh, dust in uh, different places. And at some point, Just they developed even bins to put in Exactly. The Matatu, we start lie. that within a short time, it does not make sense to us. Are you we find a, a society that possibly requires to be policed? We need no, constant I think, policing. You see, something is already happening. This, this is for sure. But painfully, we don't also bring out, it is also about you, the, the media. Mm -hmm. What is of priority is in, in this country? Just the other day I was in the park and I was seeing animals actually taking plastic and playing with plastic and even eating plastic. In fact, one baby uh, uh, elephant mm -hmm. uh, playing with that and actually ending up eating the plastic. Where has that plastic come from? When, when we set up authority and, and insurance that uh, there will be no plastics, it is the same us who go out to say that we, uh, we, we cannot survive, we are losing jobs. Jobs will be created out of all this. Life is not about just money. We need to be able to wake up and deal with some of these issues head on. It is your responsibility as the media in this country to highlight, to to highlight these yeah, issues in a manner. We are giving a platform for, for that. I discussion. appreciate, but yeah. what time is it in the morning? Some people are already on, uh, going to work. This needs to be at prime time when people this, can be by able. This, is and, prime time. And it, I understand. It, it is prime I understand. Time. And I'm, I'm not talking about KTN here. Right. Okay. I, I appreciate, but the fact that I'm here is a fact. It means that uh, something <laughs> is happening. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm saying. We are doing something. But responsibility. We blame the government. We blame the presidency. All these things have happened between 2013 and 2017. We already have something that is unprecedented in this country. Mm -hmm. But, you know, politicians will do what they have to do and is to hit at each other. But we must now focus on the real issues because the real issues that affect our people is about livelihood, mm -hmm. is about all this. Look at the flash floods mm -hmm. that we are receiving. People in a region in Ukambani the other day, all of a sudden there is no rain, there is nothing, and all of a sudden there is mortar that is uh, carrying away people. Why? Because we have depleted Mao, we have depleted other places in this country, mm -hmm. we are not replanting the way we should, mm -hmm. we do not understand the importance of water okay. protection in let, this country. Let me hear from Dr. Yeah. you wanted to respond to that. Yeah, yeah. allow me actually to weigh in on what uh, Dr. Isaac Kaloa has, has said. And uh, it's a question of um, we have the laws, we have the institutions, we have the regulations, why are we not doing something about that? And I want to go back to the point I said before that there's the question about ownership and behavior change. People need to be convinced and agree that this is in their interest to do. And unfortunately, behavior takes long to change. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what we need is to scale up. And I like the challenge that uh, Dr. Isaac Kaloa has given you, the media, because the media has got one of the highest believability rates in mm -hmm. the country. So if the media can take this seriously and put it as an agenda to change the behavior of Kenyans such that you wake up and you are thinking about climate change, you are doing your thing and whatever it is you are thinking about climate change, then the sum total of that message is going to lead to significant behavior mm -hmm. change where the role of enforcement is going to be less. In fact, it is going to be 
more of community, people enforcing among themselves, even without reference to the law. Okay. So the media has a challenge. We have a challenge, yes. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, the other thing that we need to understand, that I've found this over a long period of time, tell a Kenyan to conserve the environment and you'll be left alone, but show them how to make money and they will go that route. Why not use this as a bait? I want to challenge our entrepreneurs in this country to start businesses that really affect our people in a positive way. For instance, and I'm so glad the president took off uh, time uh, out of politics to go out to China. And you see, there are people who are reading politics, but I read something that is so great out of this. A businessman, Kenyan man, has, has partnered with uh, a Chinese institution, the New South Group. They are starting up a, a, a special economic zone in Eldoret, employing 40,000 people, the Africa economic zones, and affecting positively about 150,000 people. Most of these businesses, I think, are going to be able to positively, uh, and because it's about agriculture, this is something we need to deal with. You imagine also a situation where we are dealing with demographic challenges. Today, we are about 40 million, a few 40, 46, 40 some million uh, number of people. Previously, we were dealing with about 20 or even 10 million and 5 million previously. And the land is not changing for 580 something uh, square kilometers. And therefore, we need to start working towards efficiency. We need to start getting our people to understand what kind of entrepreneurship, reading from the world globally, mm -hmm. what are we doing that is going to help us, working towards renewable energy, working towards in, in businesses that are going to impact positively on our livelihoods, uh, and therefore dealing with things of, uh, uh, of uh, issues of uh, climate change in the way that we should. It is to actionalize. It is to enhance our activities. It is to ensure that we put our money where our you, 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 we, put your money where, your mouth where, is. where our mouth is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will be just uh, mark timing All right. uh, in some of in, these in some of these things. All right. Yeah. I need your closing comments, Dr. Moya, on the way forward, and possibly speak to Kenyans on what their responsibility is. Because at the end of the day, this is not about the government. It's not about. It's it's all of us. It needs buy-in from everyone. Uh, thank you. I will start with um, the responsibility of Kenyans because I think that is more fundamental uh, than what is done at a higher level. So what I would say is that all of us, young, small, old, whatever age, whatever position in society, we have a role to play mm -hmm. in the issues of climate change. All right. Your closing comment, Dr. Isaac Kalua. Uh, comment is very clear, and thanks for this opportunity. The county governments need to take up the issues that we have on climate change. We have the national strategy, which is the Vision 2030. All our plans and, uh, at, at the county level need to anchor on the bigger vision of the country. This will help us to plan even our resources at different times and, at, uh, and, and very efficiently. We need also to look at the institutions that we are running and how our people can be able to benefit. Nothing is as good as the silent influence of a good example. Leadership has already done what they needed to do, which is the creation of the policies and all that is needed. We now need to tap on that and actionalize and make sure that it is our responsibility. This is not a finger-pointing issue. It's a survival matter. Mm. And if we joke about matters of climate change and environmental challenges, this country is going to, to, to go into the ditch. Thank we need to much, wake gentlemen. up and be practical. Because of time, we'll have to wind up right there. That's Dr. Isaac Kalua, who is uh, Director General for Green Africa Foundation. Thank you for joining us this morning. And also Dr. Julius Muya, who is a Director General for Kenya Vision 2030. That's where we end the dawn debate this morning, but do stay with us right here on KTN News. We'll take a short break, but when we come back, well, we have the uh, political point, and Michelle Ngele is going to be driving that conversation. Also, remember uh, that there is a developing story this hour uh, that al uh, suspected Al-Shabaab militants uh, may have attacked Omar Jilo in Mandera County and killed the Mandera East chief. According to Mandera County Police Operations boss KDF from Omar Jilo, military
camp have responded to the attack. We shall definitely bring you more information on this right here on Morning Express. So we'll take a short break. We'll be right back.